us, Holy Spirit. Cover us with your wings. Yes, just open your mouth right now. Begin to prophesy to yourself that the Spirit of God must break forth. That he must break through in your life. That there must be a transformation. That the message must shift for your, for your, for your greatness. Lift up your voice. For his name's sake, he must deliver a word to you. The manifestation of God. We take hold of the atmosphere right now. Those who are not for us, those who have come to scatter, we loose your hold right now. We break you in the name of Jesus. Anyone who has come to scatter and distract the people of God right now, you may bow to the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, we break your shoulder. We break every power. Right Right now in the name of Jesus, oh, we open the heavens. May you receive a word directly from God. Let the blood speak. Let the blood overrule. Let the blood answer to every accusation. Right now, the Spirit of God takes absolute distraction 
Something has taken over your mind, your spirit, your soul that was not allowing you to focus. But by revelation, we thank God that that spirit has vacated. Yes, Lord. For the anointing of the day, saith the Lord, must manifest in your life today. Yes, Lord. The anointing that was, was promised for today, it must manifest in your life. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, give me utterance. Yes, Lord. I decrease that you may increase. Give me the grace to articulate to the people of God who desire to hear a word from you. Father God, we thank you. And we glorify your mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Kingdom Full Tabernacle International. International Ministries. I am your maid servant for the day, Prophetess Leslie Osei. And by the grace of God, I am married to the man and the angel over this commission. Our bishop elect, Dominic Osei. Want us to wave to him, he's in North Carolina breaking ground as always we appreciate you apostle and more grace to you today amen amen see we we took the kids to disney last week and it was not a vacation for us it was a vacation for them they they showed us they showed us but as soon as we arrived yesterday apostle had to go to north carolina we ask for grace for him to be able to do this work simultaneously, even as he's a good husband and a good father to the children. Amen. Please give yourself a round of applause for hearing God and being at church. Our online viewers, we thank God for your life as well, that you heard the clarion call and you know where to tune in. Amen? Amen. Please be seated in heavenly places. Somebody's prayer was working today. Somebody's prayer was working today. Because if I tell you, I was going to preach about the ministry of angels today. I had my word ready. I had everything prepared, my scriptures down to fact. I've been studying all night. The ministry of angels is such a good message. And the Lord said, no. And he began to speak to me, 3.24 a.m. He said, as for you and your husband, I'm calling you both to more. And I said, okay, Lord, but what does that have to do with the people of God? Because you got to know when a word is for you versus when it's for the people. And he said that this word that you have to deliver is because the people of God need it for their next level. And so... I was trying to figure out a way how to merge the ministry of angels with the word he has for me. And he said, no, that word is for another day. But today I want you to speak to them about the plight of greatness. The plight of greatness. And so up until just now, that's why I needed you to pray that Lord give me utterance. Because how do you switch my word within five minutes? Somebody's prayer was working. The Lord said that there are some of you here, you've been feeling very uncomfortable. You've been feeling like there's more, but you don't know how to access it. It's a feeling of restlessness. It's like you're crying out to God, God, speak to me. I need a personal word. Well, the Lord said that today is your day. And as 
as we were praying the Lord began to show me some of you literally you cannot sleep at night and this one is not as a result of a demon but it's because you've outgrown the space that you are in there's something more you know that there's more to this you desire you just don't know how to get there even in your walk with God you're like God thank you Holy Spirit the Lord said that he is empowering someone right now to stop before you raise your hand masturbation he said he's empowering you to stop for he needs you but he needs you holy he needs you blameless some of you have a lying tongue the Lord said that he's releasing you of that spirit that causes you to consciously lie gossiping tongue he said he's releasing you from it it's like you can't help yourself but to hate but he's calling you to so much greater the kingdom of God needs you more than you know God needs you more than you know today receive the anointing for the day receive the grace for the day God said he's calling you to higher. You know, if you know my messages, you know that I like to. And so for God to keep giving me messages that these people are called to greater, that means in just a short time, God wants to do something new. Some of you are literally uncomfortable. Can I get a witness? It's like your inner man is crying out. God, there has to be more than this. I got the job, but there's more to life than this. There's more to life. The Lord said that you must understand the plight of greatness. There is a spiritual height that you must attain. One of our church members texted us the other day and he said that, First Lady, if I knew that submitting my whole self to Christ would give me this much peace, I would have done it a long time ago. Today, may the Lord give you the heart to release everything at the altar. The anointing for the day, may you receive it, may it manifest in your life. The anointing for greatness, what it takes, the discipline that it takes, the spiritual sensitivity, may you receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. So the Lord has been talking to my husband and I about greatness. He said that I've called you guys to more. If you're not careful, you will sleep at the applause of men. When everyone is praising you, it is very easy to just chill and calm down. This is how the enemy seeps in. It is called the drifting. Because you don't necessarily see, but by the time your eyes are open, you have drifted far away. You have drifted far, far away. The other day when we were on the plane, Apostle was watching a documentary about a famous soccer player, Maradona Diego. Maradona Diego. Diego Maradona. <laughs> and so he was listening and I would peek in every now and then to see what was going on. This man was not a Christian or anything, but the way he rose to the ranks of greatness was amazing because he put Italy on the map. A small town in Italy, nobody knew of it, nobody knew of him. But some way, somehow, he rose to the ranks. 
But little by little, as he rose, that demon of drug addiction got to him. And though he was still playing and doing the drugs, the drifting was happening. And so if you're not careful, the Bible even speaks of the drift. That if you are not careful, the enemy will not just take you out like that. But there are some of us, when we come to church, we are so fake with our worship, with, with the altar calls, that little by little we are drifting and we no longer have a conviction in our spirit. I always tell people, that in the event you want to know how you are doing in this walk, check to see if the Holy Spirit still convicts you when you do wrong. You know, there are some of us, if we do wrong, the Holy Spirit right then and there will rebuke you. To, to be human is to err. We will err, we will be wrong sometimes. But what shows your true Christianity is when the Spirit of God convicts you and you abide by that conviction. Then there are some of us, when we do wrong, we go fornicate, we gossip. It's like we don't care. But we're coming to church. This is where the drifting happens. Because before you know it, you are talking, you are talking. The day you wake up, you see that, wow, I have drifted very far. The things I used to do, I no longer do them. I used to pray every day. And one day went by, two days went by, and then I prayed a little, three days went by. Now it's been two years since I've actually prayed on my own. Reading the word of God, many of you have drifted. Remember the Lord gave me a word once that someone has not read their Bible for 72 days. And she came and confessed. This is the drifting. But if you are called to greatness, your eyes must be cognizant when you are drifting. What used to be sin to you is no longer sin. That is called the drift. Before you know it, the enemy will take you out. And so your eyes must be open. This is why we pray, Lord, sensitize my sensitivity. Let me know when I'm going too far. Let me know when I'm falling short. Give me the grace to stand. I was watching the story of a young guy, I don't even know his name. He was a gospel singer. And the man of God that was over him noticed some feminine traits, but didn't say anything. Caused this man to continue to drift and drift and drift. Now he's a full-blown woman, or so he thinks. This is called the drift. That's why we have shepherds of our souls. This is why the Bible speaks of good counsel. You need it in your life. Because the way the enemy works is he will cause you to drip. One day I don't go to church. Two, two weeks I don't go to church. Three weeks before you know it. You're like, I have not been in church in two and three and four and five years. But the Bible says that we should not forsake the assembling of the brethren. So today God wants to speak to you about the plight of greatness. Adam and Eve, they too drifted without realizing they had drifted. Until one day their eyes opened and God was there and they realized, whoa, we have gone too far. May the Lord open your eyes to see when you are drifting. This is a prayer that you must pray. 
Because the enemy is cunning. He does not come in the same way all the time. Though he has no new tricks, he'll come in different ways. That's why you got to be careful. My husband and I have a prayer that we pray. Every time after a, a big, powerful program that we do, we hold hands and we pray that Lord, any way that the enemy wants to come into our marriage because we have blessed the people of God, cause us to see before the enemy even realizes. This is a prayer. This is one of the things that has, that has held us. The Bible says that, you know, sin will come. Through whom and way, which way it will come is what we all need to be discerning of. So you might have an embargo over your life from the enemy that says that you will die at the age of 40 because everyone in your house dies. But you don't know which way you will die. And so all you've been praying for is against cancer, but not realizing that the enemy says that you are a careless driver and so I'll use a car accident to kill you. Do which way? This is why we need to be so spiritually sensitive spiritual greatness is something that you must desire when I speak of greatness we think it's the house and the cars no today we'll talk about what it means to be spiritually great and may you receive that anointing for the day Hebrews 7 verse 4 Hebrews 7 verse 4 now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. Now read 7-7. Seven, seven. Hebrews 7-7. Seven, seven. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. The lesser is blessed by what? The better. Give me the King James Version for this one. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Amen. Give me the NIV version for this. And without doubt, the lesser is blessed by the greater. The lesser is blessed by? The greater. The lesser is blessed by? The greater. So the responsibility that heaven confers upon your shoulders is the dimension in which you have gone deep with Christ. So many of us, like my capacity sermon, are praying for some things that your shoulders cannot handle. You desire a lot of these things, but your spirit man cannot even handle it. And so God can only bless you to the level in which you are blessed. Go back to verse 4. Hebrews 7, 4. Now consider how great this man was. Now consider how great this man was. Being Abraham. He gave a tenth to Melchizedek. That's who they were talking about here. This was the high priest. And then when we go to the 7, it says that the what? The lesser is blessed by the greater. And so we consider Abraham a man of faith. We consider him to be a giant. We consider him to be a father. Yet the Bible says that he was being blessed by Melchizedek. So that stands to reason that the, the amount of things you have, your PhD, your titles, has nothing to do with your spiritual greatness. Because to the human eye, Abraham should have blessed Melchizedek. But in the heart of God, Melchizedek was the one that could release the blessing. This is why you can never give a man or woman of God who truly carries an authority anything and say that I was blessing you. 
You don't bless me. You honor me. I bless you. If you don't understand this principle, you will miss a lot. And so there are many things that you pray and ask the Lord for and God doesn't give you because there are certain requirements that you have not met. There are requirements that you must meet for everything. Before the Lord can entrust you with a ton of influence and people, you must have passed some things on the low. Godly influence, not worldly influence. And that is why when even you carry an influence in the world, when you come to Christ, he must make sure he empties out that water. Just think of a bottle of water that was filled by the world. God will not add to that because you will say that the world did it. And so God will make sure that you are brought to ground zero and then he will build you up. And so the mistake that many people make is because they carry a little influence in the world. They think it can translate to the things of God. And we all say it that, you know, the people of this world, now that they're in Christ, no, Kanye West does not work like that. He must be brought low so God can bring him high. So when you come into Christ, you will lose it all. You will lose it all. Because the principle of the kingdom still stands. There are dimensions of answers that depend on your maturity in the Lord. Good, right? Unless you are mature, there are certain answers that you will never receive. Should I go ahead with this? Should I marry him? Should I get the job? Should I receive this? You will never get the answer lest you begin to mature yourself in the Lord. And so the Lord today is saying that there's a plight that he wants you to take. There's a journey before he can make you great for his name's sake. For his name's sake. See, the problem with our generation is that we don't understand the value of God's word. Nowadays, the emphasis is on mantles and prophets and daughters of the prophet and school of the prophet. But the the emphasis needs to be on the value of God's word. Be careful, always trying to go to the school of the prophet when you don't know the ABCs of the gospel. The emphasis has been placed on olive oil and anointing oil and seed sowing when you don't even know why. How are you anointing your head and you don't have a scripture to correlate with it? This is why KFT was born, to make sure you are in line and you do things accordingly. And so it is a very hard pill for many people to receive us because we disrupt your thinking and we make you realize that you are breaking protocol. There's emphasis on all types of things, but not on the word of God. If you love God, you obey his word. He said, go forth and make disciples. Teaching them to obey the word of God. Where is that scripture? Find it for me. He didn't say make a good media team, make good ushers. He said make disciples. And the job is to teach you the value of God's word. So if you come to church and you cannot leave with at least one scripture in your spirit, not because we didn't tell you, but because you're not mature enough to receive. Go go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to what? All things that I have commanded of you. 
So number one thing that you must look for when you are picking your church is to make sure they place emphasis on the word of God. When you come into church, your thinking must be disrupted. It must be. This is called conviction. Unless you leave here with a different mindset on how to marry, on how to parent, on how to do things the right way, that means you really didn't come to church. You must know what the word of God says concerning the title that you carry. And so there's so much emphasis on wristbands, on wear this wristband to protect you, especially in Africa. Here we teach you the value of God's word. When you come, listen, I can prophesy myself right out of this building and I'll give you accurate prophecy. But the Lord said that I'm not building a church that is based on the prophetic. I'm building a church that carries value for the word of God. And so even ask the praise team and the, uh, the worship team. I harass them all the time. Give me the word of God. And now when they come up here, you see how they flow. Because they are being built up to know the word of God. You want to be great, but you have no scripture to correlate to your greatness. How is this? Be careful of the people who empower you to go forth. Lately, we've been getting a lot of that. Social media is dangerous. It will have you thinking that you are a prophetess before your time. One young lady did a program. This was about eight years ago or seven years ago. And she went mad. Because the kind of things that she was doing, laying hands on people, and then had a group of people call themselves ministers. Why? Because they were empowered. The word of God should empower you to walk in line with the precepts of God, not go ahead of time. You want to be great, it takes time. Great people don't just emerge. When we look at even the athletes, the greatest athletes out there, they did not even start training in high school. Most of them had this training and discipline from the age of like 8, 9, 10. God is not a blind promoter. He does not just blindly promote. And so you must make sure that if God has given you a word to be great, you must walk in line. Too many people don't have value for God's word, so they can't commit. This is why church hopping has become a big thing. You go everywhere seeking for everybody's prophetic word, seeking because it's the newest church in town, because the first lady looks nice. Value the word of God. Place emphasis in your spirit that, Lord, as I come, I'm coming to hear your word. I must be renewed. I must be changed. I must be convicted. Something in me must shift. Some of you are looking for greatness, but the Lord said you failed the test already. See, the way God works is when you begin to follow his word, he'll tell you, take two steps. You take it. The minute you go ahead of him and take an extra step, now you go back times five. And so a lot of us, that is what we've been doing. And so we're on a treadmill. We're moving, but there's no progress. But the anointing for the day, it will reach you. A man lives by what he is born of. If he is born of the flesh, he is sustained by bread. If he is born of the spirit, he is sustained by the word of God. 
And so what sustains you? Your nine to five or the word of God? And so many people are literally walking around and when the attacks come because they've been sustained by their monies, because they've been sustained by the things of this world, the minute they lose the car, they lose the job, you see that they are dead. They cannot move forward because that is what was sustaining them this whole time. But when you are sustained by the word of God, come what may, you press on. You don't shake, you don't shiver. Job or no job, I'm still pressing forward. Money or no money, I'm still coming to get the word of God. It does not matter because my sustenance is in the word of God and not in the hands of man. See, these kind of messages, it is messages that tell you what to do and not what you will get. So it's not always a nice message for you to hear. Our generation is used to, and the marriage is coming, and the house, and the car. Listen to the word of God. Because if the marriage breaks, will you still stand? If you reject the word of God, you are unconsciously rejecting the provision and the sustenance of the Lord. But then you are going around confused like, why is my life going crazy? You've rejected the word of God. Let's be real. That's why I run out of here half of the time. I'll be honest with you. Because half of your problems is as a result of your lack and desire to know the word. It's not always a demon attacking you. It's because you have made it plain that you don't want to know anything about God's word. And you rather make the prophets an idol. And no one will take me out because you see me as your God. I'm too real for you. There's a level of honor that you must give to me, but you will not make me your God. Let God speak to you and I confirm it. And if I must give you a word, it is not just confirmation, but even in your spirit, it must be a witness once I release it. And I tell you, when I release a word, it comes to pass. By the grace and mercy of God. That's why I don't speak too much. If you come to my house, ask those who live there. You barely see me. Because the issue is prophets are always being pulled on and tugged on. And if you're not careful, you will make me speak my own opinion instead of the opinion of God. So to keep alive for my husband and my children, let me retreat and go mind my business. This is why that office of a prophet is lonely. Because everyone is pulling for a word. And sometimes God is saying, stay silent. Don't give them a word. Let them come and seek my face. And so the word I'll give you, if you want a prophetic word from me, Go and seek the face of God. Any time I've spoken, telling you by the grace of God, it has come to fact, pass. Remember in 2020, our sister Lucy was sitting next to me. She had no man, no nothing. Looking skinny and scrawny at our 40-day fast. Super sick. Just wondering what, what life has to offer her. And it's not like we were under any anointing or crazy. The Lord just spoke to me. Tell her that she will be married at a very young age. And I told her, and she looked at me with four eyes. She said, first lady, I have no man. Can you believe about a day or two later, Elijah Conde pops up in my kitchen. The Lord told me, he messaged apostle. I'll tell you their story. <laughs> he messaged the apostle 
And I always go through apostles' messages because one thing about your bishop elect, he don't, he don't really like social media. So I go through it. And the same way Brother David was picked, he had written apostle. And when he wrote him, I said, babe, the Lord said, this is a son. And David has been a son since. So Elijah wrote the same message. And there was about seven men in apostles' inbox that day. And the Lord said, this one is a son. Now he was already in a situation. But the Lord said, this one is a son. If you ask him, we did not know him, but we told him to come from where he is from and come and live with us for a week. We don't do that anymore, so don't ask. <laughs> and he came. He was even confused that we invited him. And when he came, he sat down and we spoke to him. And we said, you know, you'll go through some deliverance this week. Just be cool. All of a sudden, a whole bunch of people walk into our house. And I'm like, Eli, I, I want to introduce you to a few people. He said, like, oh, I already know these people. Hey. And then Lucy was there and he was like, that's Lucy right there. And you know, Lucy in the old church used to sit in the front. And so the camera had been panning on Lucy for years. And the prophetic word, once it was released, by the end of that week when Elijah was leaving, he took somebody's phone number with him. Today, he is a father of one to God's glory. What God can do it does not exist. So every time Lucy sees me, especially when she was pregnant, she would begin to cry. She said, I was sitting next to your leg. I thought you were going crazy because I did not have anyone. And now look, she's a mom of one. We celebrate God for a successful pregnancy a good delivery they will come and share their testimony give it up to Jesus and so sometimes you don't need a prophetic word you need to go and seek the Word of God and once you receive the Word of God and I forgot to mention that Lucy, in that time, she lived in Jersey. The Lord told her, all 40 days, come and spend it with us. And I'm looking like, Lord, I don't, I don't think you said this one, but. And she came. For 40 days, this girl lived with me. Not knowing that God was orchestrating some things. Because there were other girls in the house. If she did not come, someone would have. But we thank God. I know she's watching screaming. <laughs> and so Matthew 28, 19, it says, go into all the world and make disciples, having them place value on the word of God. If you want to be great, you must know the word of God. You cannot be great. And I ask you for a scripture concerning your situation and you have nothing about it. How? Huh? Church growth. I was laying there one day. I used to hate social media if you don't know. Believe it or not. As I was laying there, the Lord said that, go on Instagram. I want to use that platform to send people to the church. I said, say no more. Then I began to look at all the church growth that is in the word of God. Apostle and I did studies upon studies upon studies. And as we were learning, the Lord was extending our voice. And so many of you, if you would go back down memory lane, it was through Instagram that you found us. Can I get an amen? amen. And so I would, you would be remiss to try to follow the same formula that God gave us. Because your voice might not extend as far. Maybe yours is street evangelism. But unless you place value on the word of God, 
it'll be extremely hard. How important is God's word to you? How important is it to you? Do you know God's word enough concerning your situation? The healing that you so desire, is it just the one scripture that you read? I want you to begin to place emphasis on God's word. I want you to go into the scriptures and begin to ask God for revelation. Don't tell me when you read, you don't remember. Don't tell me when you read, you don't get nothing out of it. The devil is a liar. When you touch the word of God, pray, Lord, open up the eyes of my understanding. Give me insight and revelation. Don't let me read just to read. Let me be intentional about this word. Let God make a disciple out of you. Let him make a preacher out of you. So when you speak to your children, they can know that dad has heaven's backing. That mom carries an atmosphere of heaven. It's why some of you go and mimic scripture or mimic sermons and they carry no value. Because you never placed value on the word of God. You just went and just mimic somebody else. God didn't call us to mimic. He called us to carry our own revelation. That's why people who be like, oh, and I'm going to write a list of, of a good man or a good woman. That's not your revelation. You didn't catch it. Find what God wants you to do. Yours might be scrubbing the toilets. And so because we don't place value on God's word, we place it on worldly things. We rather exalt celebrities that we don't know because we have no value for God's word, so we don't even know that God's people should be celebrated. Because we carry no value for God's word, we don't even know that our home needs intimacy. And so I should not be a busybody trying to help everybody and trying to be an entrepreneur when my home carries no intimacy. Some of you, it's not that your children are bad. It's because you lack the word of God. They know mom carries no authority. When you pray... Do they get healed? When they have a headache or a stomach ache, you should be able to lay hands on your child. That will cause them to come to Christ faster than you fussing all the time. You're not going to like me, but I'm telling you the word of God. Telling you the mind of God. You must place emphasis. Go into all the world and make disciples. Discipleship in Christ begins by the recognition and the value of God's word. If you want me to disciple you, you must first get the word that is in me first before you get my opinion about anything. Don't come standing here at, at, at the end of the day asking me my opinion. The word of God is talking to you right now. Place emphasis on the word of God. Listen, shepherds are extremely important. They're important for your soul. But nothing supersedes the word of God over your life. And my job and the apostle or the bishop elect's job is to make sure that you carry a deep value for his word. God has called you to be great. But not great in any other thing but knowing the word of God first. See, someone like Sister Sarah, when she screams, no one understands. But she's currently in school. Now, school does not determine anything. But one thing I've realized about you, Sarah, is you truly desire and carry a value for God's word. And so when we say something, you may think she's being loud, but it's because the word leaped inside of her. The girl has a deep revelation. May you experience the Paul dimension. May you experience the dimension in which you break down revelation. 
May the Lord make you one of the greatest teachers of our time. desire the Word of God so the Holy Spirit wants you to act you want the Holy Spirit to act but he cannot act without his word the Bible says in the book of Genesis that there was already things there but there, it was darkness the minute he said let there be light the manifestation of God came and the Holy Spirit began to hover over the deep. That means that there are things inside of you that are dormant and it needs the word of God to activate. So when you don't carry the word of God, that true worshiper inside of you cannot be birthed. When you don't carry the word of God, there are things inside of you that me, prophetically, I can see a king in diapers, but you, because you lack the word of God, it cannot be released. Because what the word of God does is it begins to change you. It begins to deal with your character. It begins to, to convict you. It's like a mirror. It shows you yourself. And so how can I tell you you'll be a pastor, but you have not dealt with your character? If I was a disrespectful pastor, a mean pastor, say you wouldn't come to this church. But God dealt with me. I've been holding the mic since I was 10, if you don't know. For years, God has dealt with me. And so when you see me, don't think that I emerged overnight or because I ride on the anointing of my husband, no. God has dealt with me since the age of 10. God is not a blind promoter. If you don't have value for God's word, if you are a Christian and you don't read your book, your Bible for one day, there's a problem. There's a disconnect there. See, this greatness message, you thought I was going to tell you and your name will be made great and you're going to be flying here. This is greatness. The word of God is greatness. And when you take value in God's word, he shocks you. He shocks you. Because he begins to move your life in a direction that you could not even have prayed for. See, we pray for a level. And then when you abide by his word, he takes you a hundred times. And you get so confused. How did I get here? Today, I want to stir up your spirit to truly desire the word of God. We live in a world where the manifestation of God is scarce because the word of God is scarce. You see, lately we've been having healings. Apostle and I were in prayer and the Lord said, yes, give the Lord an applause. Apostle and I were in prayer and the Lord literally told us, he said that I want you guys to move in the dimension of the manifestation. And so begin to teach more. And the more you teach, the healings will come. And the more they testify, as they are sitting there, more healings will occur. And so the word of God, when it is not there, the manifestation of his spirit is scarce. So you cannot pray amiss when you know the word of God. You cannot be reading the book of Genesis and you want a child. You cannot be reading about the birth and the creation of, of, of the world and you want a child. Go to the scriptures. Who was barren? Find the people who were barren. Let us not be fake with our religion. Be a student. Sh study to show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the word of God. It is not enough to come here every week and just be sitting here and going the same. Some of you are only plagued with certain things because you don't know the word of God. 
All you got to do is catch a revelation. And that spirit of lust, that demon of lust, that demon of masturbation, it will walk out. It will run as a matter of fact. You don't place emphasis on the word of God, yet you want to be great. Yet you want everyone to know your name. The higher you go, the crazier the fall. And the enemy, one thing about him, he will not attack you when nobody knows you. Because you are nobody. He will wait until you get to a million followers. He will wait until your whole family sees that you are doing good. And then he'll hit you. The enemy is, is very cunning. So if you don't combat him with the word of God, if you don't tangle him with prayer, if you don't carry value for God's word, he will wait until the marriage comes. And then he will hit you. That is why so many mothers, I'm telling you now a secret, they get hit with things like cancer and all that right at the brink of their child graduating. So many mothers, the Lord showed me this a long time ago. He said because they don't carry the value for God's word, but they are praying that their child would rise up. Indeed, the child rises. And at the brink in which they finally can come and celebrate their parent, you see that the parent has a stroke. You see that they die. When you can finally take care of your mother or your father, that is when something bad happens. The devil is a liar. We reverse that curse. We will carry a value for God's word. We will speak God's word. This is why you don't enter into a new level without prayer and without the word of God. You are praying for a new job. The minute you get it, the enemy knows that you just came to testify. And guess what? That's when he hits you. I remember one of those social media people. No one knew of him. The minute he hit one million followers, I believe within two weeks, all of a sudden he started cheating, doing all this stuff. And his name till this day, I think he has not been restored. The enemy doesn't like you when no one knows you. The enemy does not care about you when you are struggling with your kids. He will wait until the time of lifting. And the only thing that contends with him is the word of God. The Bible said that God released, let there be light and there was light. The only thing that can take darkness away is the word of God. So if you don't know it, that means you are subconsciously telling yourself that my downfall is here. Because the enemy has a way of him too will give you that desired job. And then he'll make you fall flat. He'll make sure you get a really nice expensive apartment. He'll make sure you propose. He'll make sure that things look good. And then he will come to test you. Then he will come to test you. And so when people open their hearts and receive God, we should make sure they know the value of God. Not how many kids they will have or how their marriage will be, but the value of God's word. A lot of you, if you would go down memory lane, when you received Christ, the teachings that you received were that God is going to bless you and bless you indeed. He's going to expand your territory. But somebody along the way should have told you that no, place an emphasis on God's word. Make sure that you commune with God more. Make sure there's a colonia with God. Make sure that you have a desire that precedes every marriage, every child, every job, every car. Today I'm letting you know, to be great, you must desire the word of God. Like it must be like fire shut up in your bones. 
My husband and I and the kids, we all sleep in the same room. And some days you'll see me with a flashlight reading the word of God. I'll wake up at odd hours because I'm like, mm, this person just asked me a question and I need revelation. One of our sisters today, if she looked at the time that I text, it was about three something in the morning. She had asked me a question about from four or five days ago. But I was praying. I said, God, don't let me release anything lest you tell me. This is the kind of people God wants. In John 14, if you read, it says that those who love my, me, they obey my word. Those who love me, they value my word with their attitudes. They submit to my word. They look at my word and then they perform. Considering how great Abraham was, he knelt down to Melchizedek because he had an understanding of greatness. He had an understanding of spiritual greatness. I am not your pastor by title, but I am your pastor by spirit because if I was to pray for you and nothing happens, that's a question mark. But I believe that anytime my husband and I have laid hands on someone or decreed and declared over someone's life, something shifted. That stands to reason that in the realms of the spirit where we stand, it's not in a lesser place. This is why you got to be careful not to go and lead a sheep and some of them be more greater than you are in the spirit. It is not by titles, but it is by authority. That is what causes you to have spiritual greatness. That is what causes you, when you speak a word, heaven watches to perform it. And so when you are so pompous and you give yourself titles, woe to you. Be careful. The book of, he uh, of Hebrew, it speaks about Abel and Rahab. Mind you, this book is supposed to be a book full of great people. So how is it that a prostitute's name was mentioned? That means that God does not look at what we look at. That means that when someone is spiritually great, it is not the way we think. We think that the titles, the cars, the houses, no. Spiritual greatness, it comes from a few things, and we'll talk about it. Some of you will sell your birthright because you don't know the word of God. Some of you will literally sell your birthright because you lack rhema, you lack logos. You don't know anything about anything. And so you are willing to say that I'm giving this up for food. You are living for now instead of living for destiny. You have allowed the things of the world to make decisions for you. And so God knows the beginning from the end, but you choose your end. God knows the beginning from the end. He will tell you, I want you to be a prophet. But you choose if you will become a prophet. Some of us have chosen to be mediocre. Some of us have chosen not to read, not the whole Bible, at least one book in the Bible. Some of you, if we would be honest, I won't embarrass you. But not the whole Bible, because of Maybe you don't want to read the whole Bible. But one whole book in the Bible you still haven't read. Even Obadiah, you still have not read that book. Live for destiny. Live for destiny. 
Destiny is calling. Will you answer? Acts 13, 36. Acts 13, 36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. After he served his generation, he fell asleep. When you die a hundred years from now, will we say that you served your generation or did you serve yourself? What did you do for your generation? Or were you so self-absorbed with how you look, how much money you make, how many titles you have, that you forgot spiritual greatness trumps physical greatness? Think about it. When you die, a hundred years from now, because none of us are dying in the name of Jesus anytime soon. But when you go to sleep, can we say the same thing? That you served your generation. Or will it be said that she served herself? That she attained a level of CEO, but never brought a single person to Christ. Never evangelized to anyone. Came to church every day, but did nothing in the kingdom of God. You want to be great? You want to be great. Saul, a man that was persecuted, stood and he literally was one of those people that would hold the people's garments while they stoned the apostles. His end was for him to be one of the greatest. On the way to Damascus, when the Spirit of God took over him, he made the decision that this time I'm for Christ. Some of you, you think you are serving God, but you are serving gold. You think you're doing the right thing until the Spirit of God comes to convict you and you realize that, wow, I've been doing it all wrong. This is why I said that God knows his, the end from the beginning. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows the first and the last, but you choose it. You determine it. Your choices. Matthew 23, 17 to 19. Matthew 23, verse 17. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift, that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? If I come to give a million dollars and I'm a scammer and my character is poor, which one is greater? Is it the million dollars or the altar? The altar is greater. So that stands to reason again. The, the blessing comes from the altar. And so you think that your million dollars is something. But God is trying to tell you that you don't place value on my word. And so you are consumed with the money that you make and the fact that you pay tithes and offering. But it does nothing to me if your character is poor. Are you serving God or are you serving gold? Are you thinking when I say greatness, are you thinking about the house, the cars, the kids? Or are you thinking about getting to a place where you are in good standing with Christ? The Bible says that Job, not that he was the one who had all the, the things in the world. But he was the one that was considered blameless, which stands to reason that God cares about your character more than even what you give. God cares about your character being pruned. 
God cares about you emphasizing the word of God when you move in every direction. More than what you can come here and give. This is why people are sadly mistaken that their, that their offerings do something. It's for you more than it is for me. But if your character is poor, know that God will even reject it. Know that your, your character, if it is poor, God will reject it. Nobody wants to talk about character. Nobody wants to talk about sin. Everybody wants a house, car, job, kids. They want a white picket fence. They want the marriage. They want the money. Top three things people pray for, house, marriage, and a car. Everything is wealth. But your character, God wants to make you great, but your character is poor. You don't know nothing about character when it comes to the word of God. Today, I'm telling you, I was praying, and the Lord said, so many people have failed the test that I put them through. I wanted to promote them. We must get to a place where our character causes people to search after God. We must get to a place where your, your atmosphere, if it's being infiltrated by sin. Do you know who was one of the greatest people in the world? John the Baptist. And in prayer, I ask God, why was John the Baptist one of the greatest people to be born by a woman, by, born by a human? And the Lord said, because of his message. And I went back and I went to his messages. And John the Baptist is the one who introduced everyone to the Christ. He pointed everyone to Christ. And so that stands to reason for you to be great. Your life must point people back to Christ. If your life does not point people to Christ, it is useless. If your marriage, if your business, if your ministry, if it does not point people back to Christ, you do not carry spiritual greatness. Spiritual greatness is when your whole being allows someone to accept Christ. When your behavior causes people to repent without even saying a word. When people see you and desire to know more about Jesus. He said that the greatest amongst you guys is John the Baptist. Because of his message, he pointed people to Christ. If you want spiritual greatness, nothing makes God favor a man except he points people back to Christ if you want to see true favor begin to point people back to Christ begin to always refer people back to Christ don't take anything for yourself how did you do this it is the grace of God how do you take care of all those kids it is the grace of of God if you want to be great you must point people back to Christ now I'll quickly get to this to be spiritually great number one you must be obedient Matthew 5 19 to be spiritually great Matthew 5 19 whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Obedience to God. Every time you disobey God, you disqualify your place in the realms of the spirit. So if God has called me to stand here, and he said, stand still, don't move. The minute I move, I have displaced myself from where God wants me to be. Every time you move out of disobedience, you are saying that God, I no longer want the position. Every instruction is an opportunity to access a new dimension in God. 
Every time God wants you to move in another dimension, he gives you instruction. Can you hear it? Will you obey? Those are the questions you should ask yourself. Obedience is the greatest sign that you are truly submitted to Christ. Not by the things you say, but by your obedience. It demonstrates your submission. He said, go into the world and make disciples. Go into the world and make disciples. Teach them. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his word. Come on, sing it. When you do his good work, he abides with us still, and with those who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Some of you, this is the song that needs to be in your spirit. Media team, this is the time you should have put up the lyrics. Because people need to know what the song says. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on. to be spiritually great to get to a level of greatness you must trust and obey you must know the word of God so you can obey it ignorance is not a reason when you are in the word of God when you become a Christian you can no longer say I did not know it's up to you to go and find out The only way to be happy, the only way to access divine happiness is through obedience of the word of God. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All oh, the ground is sinking, sinking sand. All oh, of the ground is sinking, sinking sand. On oh, Christ the solid rock ground is sinking sand so you and your worldly book knowledge after a while you will sink if you want to be spiritually great you must obey the word of God I've got something more than gold something more than gold I got something more than gold something more than gold Something more than gold. Something more than gold. 
know the word of God if you don't know the word of God how can you obey it how can you obey it ancient word ever, ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts oh, Come on, make this your confession. We have come with open hearts All that the ancient words impart Ancient words ever true Changing me and changing you We have come with open hearts All that the ancient words impart songs of old you need to know these songs don't just know you are Jaira <laughs> know these songs that speak to the soul that speak to the spirit man words that would dictate to you what to do the ancient words need to impart in your soul put this on your playlist let these words speak to you. Me, I'm a hymn girl. Can sing hymns till thy kingdom come. It's the Methodist in me. These are the words that should be imparted. To be spiritually great, you must be obedient. Number two, you must be humble. Matthew 18, 1 to 4. Matthew 18, verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will, be, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, humility... Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. If you want to be spiritually great, you must learn how to humble yourself. Enough with the titles. Enough with the Pharisee-like. The Pharisees, they didn't humble themselves. When they got a title, they wanted everyone to know. You must lay on the floor for them when they are coming. That's how some of us have become. We want everyone to exalt us. 
Humility. If you did something good for someone and they did not thank you, that is fine. You don't need to be thanked. You did it because you are a Christian. <laughs> Satan, he was known, Lucifer, he was known as the anointed cherub. Th those kind of angels, they are the ones who cover God. See, I told you I had a whole message on angels. They were the ones who anointed, they covered God. The Bible said that when he was made, he was made with a light. And this light, he got ahead of himself and he began to exalt himself. And he thought that the light was his own, but little did he know that it was a reflection of God. And so when you don't walk in humility, the minute he decided to exalt himself, that is when he was cast down. You want to be spiritually great. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Dr. Rhoda and Dr. Chi, you guys are truly great. These people have reached a level in which many of us would love to reach. They are doctors of doctors. But come see them sweeping. Come see them scrubbing. May the Lord make your name great. True humility. The greatest amongst you is the least. Me, if you are a, a, a personal assistant to me, it's probably one of the worst jobs because you don't find much to do. I don't like people serving me because I feel as if me, who am I in the first place? I'm called to serve you. And so ask them, we struggle all the time. Even today, Stephanie was trying to hold my bag and I told her, girl, leave my bag alone, let me do it. Humility. And so when we see someone is great, we don't understand. Walk in humility. I used to cringe when people call me first lady. I still cringe now, but ask apostle, I used to cringe, my body used to cringe, because I said, who am I to be the first amongst anyone when I, I was the last? It was just by mere election. Who am I to lift myself up? Who am I? Some of you, you get one pay raise, ha. Some of you become husbands and wives, now we should kneel down to you. When God gives you a new title, it is for you to serve even more diligently. Humility. The greatest amongst you will actually be the one that is serving. So you would be remiss to always desire to be called. Some of you, if we don't call you by your title, cool. And some of you are so disrespectful that you don't even know the word of God says that no matter who you are, an elder is still an elder. <laughs> Mama Suzanne, she calls me her spiritual mother, but not a day goes by that I don't give her the due respect. Who am I? Because I have a title now, I should talk to her anyhow. The devil is a liar. You want to be spiritually great? Bring yourself all the way down. Low yourself. That is true spiritual greatness. Jesus had no home. Remember, he was born in a manger. He didn't carry any title. He was doing prayer meetings in Peter's house. He used to borrow people's houses to do the Passover feast. He didn't have as much as you have, yet he is the greatest. Bring yourself low. Some of you, even children, they cannot come near you because they will mess up your clothes. Some of you talk to your parents anyhow. Talk to your spouses anyhow. Listen, I could have been a CEO and apostle or bishop elect Dominic could have been the garbage man that was collecting. And I will make sure you refer to me as the wife of the garbage man. Yeah. 
not the CEO. Bring yourself low. You want to attain a spiritual height. Bring yourself low. Stop thinking so highly of yourself. In fact, anytime someone calls you by your title, it should cause you to lay on the floor. You are now a husband, lay on the floor and thank God. You are now a CEO, lay on the floor and thank God. You are now considered a part of the mothers, lay yourself down. But some of you, when God moves you to another dimension, that is when you want to put an even bigger chip. But he who exalts themselves, they shall be brought low. The lower you go, the higher God takes you. Spiritual debt equals spiritual height. Who are we? What is our house? That God would consider us. You got to think about yourself. Why am I so pompous? But when we look at your account, even the people who are wealthy don't even act the way you act. Bring yourself low. Bring yourself low. Pride is depending on your own strength. That's why whoever doesn't pray, you are prideful. Because prayer is saying that I depend on the strength of God. I depend on the grace of God. I cannot do this by myself. And so when you don't pray, that means you think you got it. You are prideful. That's pride. And so every prayer warrior, you cannot be prideful. Because you know it's not on your own. You want to be great? Humble yourself. Every time God gives you a new title, go even lower. That's the day you should say, I want to even go and serve in the Sunday school. I want to wipe the floor for them. Bring yourself low. See, Christ was without reputation. I don't want to be known as the 10 for 10 prophetess. I don't want to be known as fire mama. I want to be known as the servant of God who drew people to Christ. That supersedes every other title. Humble yourself. Some of you, God cannot give you that new title because the little bit he showed you, you have exalted yourself. You get a new wig and it's like, nobody talk to me. Nobody talk to me today. So how can he even give you a hair business? Perhaps he wants to make you a factory of wig dealers. I'm being honest. One little thing that you get, one little title that you get. And if God is scared to entrust titles to you, that means he's scared to promote you. The anointed cherub of God, he forgot that his light came from God. That he was a reflection of God. And he said that my light is bright. Let me begin to exalt myself. And we saw where that ended him. You are disobeying your husband because you think that he should be a good husband. But little did you realize that the scriptures say, submit to your husband. Not a good husband. He said, submit to your husband. See, but when you are not humble, he's not doing right, and so I'm not doing right. So now you are disrespecting God, you are disobeying scripture, all because you think you are too good to be mishandled. There it goes. Wives, submit to your own husbands, not the good husband, not the bad husband. You're doing it because I told you to, not because he's good or bad. You see how we mess up? Husbands, love your wife. Not when she's good, not only when she respects you, but love your wife. Do it because you love God, not even because you love me. I always say my husband is a man at the end of the day. He's a man. 
And I always say, he can always cheat on me. There's girls with better bodies than me, better faces than me. No, God forbid, but I'm being real with you. What stops him is his love for God, his humility for God, his reverence for God. He loves God more than he loves me. So it's not a matter of me. It's a matter of he loves God more than he loves me. So when it comes to cheating, I won't worry. Because his love for God supersedes what he has for me. Humility. Number three, service. Matthew 20, 25. Matthew 20, verse 25. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Keep going. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. There we go again. He was talking about the Pharisees. The little bit of post that they got. The little title that they got. The little bit of followers, since we live in this generation of followers. Now they became so pompous. But a true person who is great is a servant. True greatness is not the desire to be served, but the desire to be positioned to serve. If you want to be great in life, don't always be worried about who can serve you, who can bow down to you. Begin to look to serve others. Begin to look to serve others. Telling you, those of you who want uh, uh, babies in this house, men and women, Begin to help those who you see. When a stroller is coming, say, I'll pick up the stroller for you myself. Serve. That is how you get released to be blessed. By service. No one is greater than service in the house of God. There are people that will never join certain ministries because they feel like they're above it. There are people that would never do certain things because who am I? I've studied more than you know. Do you know who my mother is or what? Do you know how much money is in my bank account? Well, guess what? I know people who have died and left their trillions in the account. Humble yourself and serve. If you want to be spiritually great, learn how to serve. Don't be a person who always just, you put your leg over the other and think that everyone should bow down to you. These kind of messages won't get you hype, but it'll get you together. It'll cause a turnaround. Don't take your title and oppress others. Some of you, you, you get a little title, your whole family has to now suffer for that title. So what if you are a nurse? So what if you are now the principal? Your whole family has to now bow down. Your mother who gave birth to you, now you have the nerve. May you repent. May you repent. Those who know me, when I'm around my mother, forget what a prophetess is. I'm serving her like the little girl that I've been. What is a first lady? Sometimes she's the one who tells me, Mommy, sit. I'm like, uh uh. Not about to make me lose my blessings. <laughs> Serve. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Quickly, what is the benefit of spiritual height? Number one, God gives you the authority to bless. When you carry spiritual greatness, Hebrews 7, 7, you carry the authority to bless. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Amen. John the Baptist was great. He's the one who baptized our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you carry spiritual greatness, 
This is why you need to desire it. Not just because I'm preaching it. When you go back into the word that I'm preaching, go back and say, Lord, why is it that I need to be great? Because now I carry the authority to bless others. Why do you want to be a Christian who carries no blessing in your mouth? Some of you go around, God bless you, God bless you, and God don't bless these people. When I say happy birthday to you, I mean that your whole year has to be happy. It must be. So I don't do HBD. I say happy birthday. I bless you for your birthday because I know what is in my mouth. I know where I stand in the spirit. Some of you, this is why you need to desire it. So when you bless your child, happy birthday, my child. May this be the best seventh year of your life. You will see that the teachers will be saying, what kind of child is this? Why are they so smart? Why are they so good? You need spiritual greatness. It's not just a sermon for you. It's a sermon for you to take and do what you need to do with it. You need it so you can bless. The more I obey God, the more I humble myself, the more I serve, the more the anointing comes upon me. And then I can move in authority for my kids. You need it. Especially if you desire to be a parent. You need spiritual greatness. You need to reach a level of height in the spirit. Woe unto you if you have a mother or a father that carries no power, no authority. When they speak, nothing moves. Woe unto you. Woe unto you if you are a husband that carries no authority. Woe unto you if you are a wife who cannot speak into your husband's life. The other day when Bishop Quasi came, he looked at me and he said, God bless you, you've made a bishop out of this man. And I looked at him and I was confused and I said, well, he's the bishop elect. He said that if you were not a woman of wisdom, your husband would not be able to reach that. I knelt on the floor and I began to sob, messed up my makeup. You need to carry spiritual greatness. It's not just about you, but when you open your mouth, something must shift. Something must shift. The second reason why the benefit of spiritual height or spiritual greatness is God answers your prayers. Job 42, 7 to 8. Job 42, verse 7. And so it was, after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore, continue. take yourselves seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, mm. for I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Amen. Go and take offerings to Job, because when he prays, I answer. When he opens his mouth, I answer. You want to know why you have to be spiritually great? Because not everyone's prayers are answered. Not everyone who prays for you are their prayers answered. Don't be fooled. That's why you should not be fooled by everyone laying hands on you. Test everyone by the spirit. Don't go every and anywhere. Check them in the spirit. How is it that you have done wrong, but God is saying, come and do something so that I can open my mouth because he won't hear you, but he hears me. Spiritual height. There's a level you must get with God so that he can answer your prayers. So even when your husband does wrong, because you are his wife, when you open your mouth, he must answer the family. When your wife acts up, Because you carry a spiritual greatness. When you open your mouth, he answers. 
don't sit around unconcerned. Just going day in and day out as a child of God with no rhema, with no logos, with no understanding of anything. This is why you need to be spiritually great. He honors God answers, and when you are spiritually great, he honors your word and answers your prayers. God has to begin to honor your word. Some of you blindly prophesy. There's no power behind it. There's no backing at all. Aren't you ashamed? You call yourself a Christian, yet there's no signs, no wonders. You are full of fluff and puff. Won't you humble yourself and allow God to lift you? You see, God is, is so strategic and he does nothing by mistake. And so if he's put you in a family where there's no marriage, don't say that, God, why did you put me in this family? He knows that when you reach that height and you open your mouth, you break the lineage of divorce, you break the lineage of all these things. And so he did not by mistake put you in a place. He said that I put you here strategically to break down some altars because you are building yourself up. When you open your mouth, I will answer. And so it's not by mistake that you are in a you come from a family where there's no money. It's not by mistake that you are you were put in a family that all of them are crazy as hell. When you open your mouth, God will begin to answer. The third reason your reward in heaven is great. Matthew 5:12. Matthew 5 verse 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. In my father's house are many what? Because you are spiritually great. You know that a hundred years from now, when you leave here, you are not going back to the projects in which you lived on earth. You are going to a mansion that is bigger than anything that you have seen. You are not going to ride on your little bicycle in heaven. There are rewards in heaven. When you decide to be spiritually great, when you decide to walk the straight and narrow, when you decide to obey, to humble yourself and serve, God takes you to a place beyond here. When you leave here, no time soon by the grace of God. But when you leave, your end shall be glorious. You too shall be able to run through a house. Some of you live in a box now, but it is fine. You are being persecuted now. We pray that you can enjoy in the land of the living. But what about heaven? What about heaven? Some of you are living for now, selling your birthright, forgetting your destiny compromising your truth that you know. I was watching a, a video on Joe Biden when before, about 10, 20 years ago, he was talking and he was saying that the gay, lesbian stuff is horrible, it's wrong. What caused him to shift just like that? That means some of us have been compromised. This is called the drifting. But the reason why we need to be great is so that we can secure a good spot in heaven. It goes beyond earth. Today I prophesy the anointing for the day. The anointing to be spiritually great. The anointing to humble yourself. The anointing to obey. The anointing to serve wholeheartedly. May it rest upon you. May the Lord begin to release a grace upon you that would cause you to be so great in the spirit that you would carry blessings in your mouth. That when you open your mouth, heaven will back you. 
that your screaming will not just be screaming that your prayers will not just be in vain but you will carry a level a level in the spirit of God that causes you to be as great as John the Baptist the Bible said that Jesus said greater works shall we do uh, today receive the grace for greater works receive the grace to do more to do better to stand on the shoulders of giants that desire to be great in the spirit that desire to break down the word of God that desire to pray dimensions of prayers that desires to cause people to draw to Christ just by the way you live your life today you're going to pray you will thank God and you will ask for this grace the first grace we are asking for is that Lord give me the ability to obey your word uncompromised some of you are too compromised because of what people will say because of your past Jesus was born in a manger but he did not stay there your past should not dictate anything all the people in the Bible their stories ended great so you busy using your past and as an excuse is just laziness. People have aborted and become the greatest men and women of God because they repented and they hated the sin. People who were scammers loved the Lord and hated the sin and now are doing exploits. So there is room for you. The kingdom of God needs you. It is not okay to be mediocre. It is not okay to be bored by the word of God. That's a demon. That's a demon. Today we are praying that Lord, give me the ability, give me the grace. Pour down your grace for me to be uncompromised. When I hear it, I do it. When I read it, I go for it. Until you speak, I will not move. I want you to begin to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lord, give me the ability, the grace, the power. Come on, pray. Lord, give me an obedient spirit. The ability to obey your word uncompromised despite what my family will say despite of anything the word of God uncompromised in my belly lift up your voice and begin to pray cry out for the grace of the day Jesus. Say you evil spirits. You evil spirit. Causing me to disobey. Causing me to disobey. The word of God. The word of God. To live in sin. To live in sin. Today. Today. You end here. You end here. Today. Today. We render you powerless. Powerless. In the name. In the name. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. I pull down the anointing. I pull down the anointing. To obey. To obey. The word of God. The word of God. As I lift up my voice, I receive the grace to obey. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. 
Come on, pray. Pull down the anointing for the day. Pray. Any long standing afflictions that have caused you to disobey the word of God, the time is up. You expire today in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace to obey in everything that you do concerning the word of God. For he is the potter and in his hands of clay he will make and mold you as you pray for an obedient spirit today. Lord, cause me to obey your word wholeheartedly. Come on, pray. A desire to obey. A spirit of obedience. For the sake of your generation. For the sake of your children. For the sake of humanity. It is time that you hear the voice of God. It supersedes your emotions. It goes past your battles and your struggle. Come on, pray. Some of you will think that you have become a spiritual robot because you will hear God and you will move. You will hear God and you will move. Jesus. And it will end well with you. Yes, Lord. Now, before we continue, all eyes closed. These prayers cannot be attributed to you if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. These prayers, God wants, he wants you to prosper. I've sat down and realized that God is not in the business of torment. He does not desire to torment us. He wants us to prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. If you know that you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, this is the hour. This is the hour. We don't rush this part. 
But if you are being pricked in your heart, if you've never received Christ, this is not a matter of repentance, but this is a matter of surrender. I want you to walk up to the front. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. says when a soul is born again heaven rejoices the angels rejoice and because we mimic heaven we too rejoice young man and young lady this is the best decision of your entire life you will be enlisted in the army of God. This is an army that sticks close together. We win battles together. We go through trials and tribulations together. And most of all, we declare that God is our Lord and also our personal savior. Today with your hands lifted up, I want you to re re repeat after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, today I thank you for the opportunity. More are coming. Celebrate heaven. Celebrate Jesus. If there's anyone else, harden not your heart. This is the hour. hands lifted say dear Lord Jesus today I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my personal Savior today I believe in my heart that you died on the cross and you arose on the third day and that the blood that you shed was for me on Calvary today Accept me, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Today, accept me into your fold. I confess that you are the resurrected altar. Today, I thank you for the opportunity to give my life over to you again. Today, as I walk in this new life, I receive the grace to be disciplined, to walk in line, in obedience to your word. I thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' name. And we all shout a big. Amen. Father God, I pray for these ones that today would be the first day of their life that they would receive the grace of discipline. That today, that the anointing for the day to be spiritually great, that the first word that they heard today was for them to place value on the word of God. Let them become scholars of the word. Father God, let them place emphasis on the word. Let them know and chew your word. Let them meditate on your word. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We cover their minds from any attack today. We thank you and we glorify your mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The evangelism team has a gift for you. And please follow them to the back so they can collect your information. Amen. Let's rejoice.
please follow our sister the spirit of offense and the spirit of disobedience they walk hand in hand John the Baptist the man that we all just called the greatest man on earth because of disobedience because of offense it caused his head to end up on a platter Jesus. there are powers that fight you when you decide to walk uncompromised in the word of God today we are praying that any power yes, that has exalted itself Jesus. against the power of God Jesus. that will cause you to have your head end up on a platter Jesus. today we render it powerless yes, Lord. say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Every, spirit every spirit that torments me that, torments that, me. that causes me, that causes me. To, walk in to walk in disobedience that wants my head, that wants my head. on a platter be humble some of us is not us it is a generational spirit your father was prideful your mother was prideful they didn't know how to even talk to the people that God put over their souls and so as a result you didn't know but today now you know say father father I remove I remove every heart every heart a stone of stone and replace it and replace it with the spirit with the spirit of humility of humility today today grant me a new heart grant me a new heart a heart, a heart that is humble that is humble a heart, a heart that is receptive, that is receptive to the word of god, the word of god. As, I pray, as i pray i break every generational, break every generational spirit a pride, a pride that has entangled me, entangled that has lied to me, yes. that has caused me, has caused me to, fall to fall and self-destruct self today, today as I humble myself, I, humble myself, I, trust, I trust that you will lift me will lift today, today I, receive I receive the spirit, the spirit of, humility. of humility come on pray deal with that negative spirit deal with that demonic spirit that heart of stone, that prideful nature, that nasty face, come on, deal with it. Let me walk in humility. Every heart of stone that has caused me not to receive the word of God. The grace for humility, the heart for humility. Father, remove every 
crystal that is placed in my heart. Replace it with a new heart of humility. Father, we come against the spirit of pride. Take it away. Take it away. We desire to go higher and deeper. 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 Every demon of stubbornness, today we rid you of your power. Come on, deal with that spirit. There's an anointing for it. The spirit of pride that wants to ruin your marriage. The spirit of pride that wants to ruin relationships. The spirit of pride that keeps you in retrogression. The spirit of pride that causes you to lose your blessings. That causes you to be brought low. We rebuke that spirit. We rebuke that demon. Come on, pray. This is the hour of visitation. The Lord is dealing with some character issues. Your end is glorious. You are needed for this kingdom. God will exalt you as you bring yourself low. Pray for the right kind of heart. Ask for grace not to see yourself better than others, but to be humble that God called you for the position that you are in. of God. Yes, sir. May you not become an enemy of God. Yes, sir. May you carry a humble and a contrite heart. Yes, yes, sir. May God reside in your house because yes, you are humble. Yes, We're praying for the heart of service. Jesus. Many of us, you didn't see it in your house, so it's hard for you to do. But as you hear the word of God, may you desire to serve in every capacity, in the kingdom of God, not just in church. May you be known as a good Samaritan. Jesus. May you be known as someone who knows who their neighbor is. Yes, Lord. You are praying that Lord give me the heart of service. Jesus. May you not sit anywhere there is a need and not be able to fulfill it. Jesus. May God give you dimensions of grace. To be so relevant that you can fill any position at any time. 
Some of you, I see your fingertips will begin to burn. The Lord said, I'm giving you the gift of instruments. You know the church of God, not just KFT. One thing that is missing in a lot, atmosphere is a lot. And so we need sound. Prophetically, you need sound. And every church needs to have not just one or two drummers, not just one or two pianists. God will give some of you a downloaded grace to serve in that capacity. Some of you have never touched an instrument, but there will be a strong desire. You will go on YouTube and learn how to play the piano just like that. A heart of service to serve even children. A heart of service where when you see that there is a, a blank somewhere, your heart, your desire is to fill it. The Lord said, some of you, you need the, this grace for your marriage. Some of you have never seen what it means to serve a husband. To serve a wife. As a result, ultimately, it will end you wrong. But today, God wants to deal with your heart. And I want you to take this seriously. That Lord, let me not be okay when there is a problem. Until it's fixed, let me not be okay. Give me the desire to serve. Some of you, your, your marriages have just been fixed before it began because of this prayer. Some of you, the divorces that happened with your aunts, your uncles, your mothers, your fathers, it was lack of the heart of service. They genuinely didn't know how to serve. But people don't know that certain things are graces. If you ask for it, God will give you. The Bible says that men should even learn how to live with their wives, with understanding. Some of you, your wives, they will need you to help serve. There's a level where a wife serves, but there's also a level. My husband will not sit there and see me struggling with my kids. That, how, how could he even be intimate with me at night? So as a wife, I would be upset with him if he's not helping me. You're praying that, Lord, give me the heart of service. I need to carry this heart everywhere I go. Yes, Lord. Lift up your voice and just pour out to God. Lift up your voice. <laughs> Pray that the Lord would grant you a heart of service to serve the people, to serve your nation. The reason why things have not been unleashed and unlocked to you is because you lack the ability to serve wholeheartedly. <laughs> Yes, a strong desire, a heart of service, as a wife, as a husband, as a minister of God, as a servant of God, as a church member, as a as a daughter, as a son, the heart of service of God. We break every barrier that caused the divorce, that caused friction in the marriages that preceded. I break that spirit of pride that will not allow me to myself to serve ask the Holy Spirit to teach you 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 to be bold enough to step up to be 
In the name of Jesus. Eyes closed, hands lifted. The reason why I keep saying receive the anointing for the day is because these are the words that are being uttered to me in the spirit. Receive the grace to be taught. Receive the grace to humble yourself. Anytime you, you are lifting yourself, anytime your flesh is getting ahead of your spirit, receive the sensitivity to hear the voice of God. May the spirit of, of pride that makes people the enemy of God not consume you. May you carry a teachable spirit. May you carry a teachable spirit. As you ascend spiritually, may the Lord give you the ability to bless. May he give you the authority to bless. I see heaven backing every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Your words will no longer be void. When you speak, you shall bless anyone who is lesser than you. I see a shaking coming up in your spirit that breaks down the walls of pride that causes you to be in good and right standing with God. Receive the grace right now. Receive the grace for your prayers to be answered. When you pray, may heaven honor your word. May heaven honor your word. May heaven honor your word. May your heaven honor your word. May you carry a reward in heaven. When you depart a hundred years from now, when you live a full and joyous life, when you run the good race, may your reward be so plenty in heaven. Receive the grace to ascend. Receive the grace to ascend. Every word that you read, may you not read it like normal. May the Lord give you insight. A dimension of revelation. A dimension of insight. A spiritual height. A spiritual depth. As you go deeper, may the Lord take you higher. As you go deeper, may the Lord take you higher. Even as your eyes are closed, may the Lord begin to reveal mysteries to you. May the Lord shine a light upon you as a sign that he's heard you. May you begin to see the light of Jehovah right now. May you begin to see the light of Jehovah right now. Receive insight. Receive revelation. Receive the spirit to be committed and submitted. A year from now, may you see that you have a track record with Jesus. May it be said that you have been ascending and you are no longer on a roller coaster that causes you to fall and then arise. But as you go deeper in Christ, may you go higher and 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 higher. May spiritual greatness be your portion. When you pray, may heaven back you. When you declare, may heaven back you. When you speak, may heaven back you. May you stand in right positioning with Christ. Yes. Yes. Yes, I hear utterance, new utterance. Just speak in tongues. Just speak. The Lord has given you an utterance. Ascend. Build up yourself. The next two minutes. Those of you who are not familiar with tongue speaking, I want you to come to the front. The Lord will baptize you today. If you desire the gift of tongue speaking, if you desire it, He said, open your mouth wide and He will fill it. Come on, pray. Just open your mouth to ascend in the things of God. Lift up your voice. Yes, 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 yes. Chaka chaka da ba sha. 
Just open your mouth wide. Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, pray. Just say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Be baptized right now. An infilling of the Spirit of God. Now believe Him. Trust Him. Do not think it's in your mind. Yes. Hey. Come on, pray. Lift up the background of my Come on, pray. the gift Spirit of the Lord let there be a visitation right now manifest yourself blow like a mighty wind those of you who speak in tongues begin to stir the atmosphere desire a new level those of you in the front, eyes closed, hands lifted, just begin to say Jesus. Come on. Yes, 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 there it goes, there it goes, come on, come on, come on, pray. Don't stop, 
How many of you received your gift? Lift up your hands. Let heaven see you. Lift up your hands. I want you to pray. Don't stop praying. Pray. Pray. In the name of Jesus, may the anointing be the of the day manifest in your life. Yes, Lord. We thank God for giving them their gifts. For giving them their gifts. I want you to begin to thank God right now. Just thank Him. Thank Him for what He's done and who He is. Thank Him for the revelation, the insight, the rebuke, the conviction. For the anointing of the day we ask that our angels go ahead we deploy them today and anything or any spirit that will try to contradict this word that they will send sabotage to it in the name of Jesus our father let your word ring in our spirits Anytime we are exalting ourselves, let the Spirit of God convict us to humble ourselves. Lord, give us the heart of service. Let us be obedient to your ancient word. Let it impart in us. Father God, we cover those who received their gifts today in the blood of Jesus. Those online that received as well, we cover them all in the blood of Jesus. all shout a big a big amen Amen. please feel free to sow into the word as you are instructed and led to Cover every seed with the blood of Jesus. Make sure you touch the altar. There's a mystery of the altar. Make sure you touch the altar and cover it with it. Don't just send it. Do it out of revelation. We cover every seed with the blood of Jesus as we covenant with it. May it extend for generations where our children's children's children will ascend and never descend into the camp of the enemy. In Jesus' name, amen. Another minute and then announcements. by today's word. On behalf of Bishop-elect Dominic Ose and Prophet Leslie Ose, we want to welcome you to Kingdom Full Tabernacle International Ministries. We are located here at 65 Tokenic Road, Darien, Connecticut. Here are our weekly programs at our headquarters. We have midday prayers every Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. We also have midnight oil prayers every Monday through Thursday at 12 a.m. online only. 
We have Bible studies every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in person and online. After every Bible study, we also have prayer night where the sanctuary will be open for prayer. Every Friday at 7 p.m., we have our fire for fire night service. And of course, every Sunday at 10 a.m., we meet in-house and online for our Sunday service. By the grace of God, we have two amazing branches, one in Charlotte, North Carolina, and one in Silver Spring, Maryland. Our North Carolina location meets every Sunday at 1 p.m. and Jericho Hour every Saturday at 10 a.m. Our Maryland location meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. for in-person services. Here are our upcoming programs. On May 7th, we'll be having our baby dedications. So if you have been a member for at least six months and you would like to dedicate your child, please make sure to send an email to us at info at kftchurch.com. Coming up, we also have our Day of Pentecost program, which will be taking place from May 26th to the 28th. This is 50 days after the resurrection where the followers of Jesus experience an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. On June 23rd to the 25th, we invite all men to our Aquamarius Conference at the headquarters, 65 Tekunaki Road, Garden, Connecticut. On July 22nd, we invite you all to the elevation and consecration of our Bishop Elect Dominic Osei. On July 23rd, we invite you all again to the grand opening and dedication of our new building. From August 7th to the 13th will be the largest women's conference ever, known as the Think Pink Women's Conference. This year's Think Pink is going to be special and will be a week long. We'll be starting off with two days of global prayers, and then we have a special girl chat on Wednesday. And then of course, Think Pink takes off from Thursday till Sunday. Be sure to purchase your tickets. For our charity initiatives, we have the Mancreso Secondary School Bathroom Project in Ghana, West Africa. This initiative is led by Bishop-elect Dominic Osei and Prophetess Leslie Osei to alleviate the current environmental health and safety risks at the girls' campus of the school. Be sure to visit the charity table in the foyer to learn more about the project and how to give and support. We want to remind you all that we have a Sunday school ministry in our headquarters. Parents are welcome to drop up their kids from ages 3 to 11 for Sunday school and 12 to 18 for our youth service. If the Lord has been good to you and you want to share your testimony with us, please feel free to email us at testimony at kmtchurch.com to follow all our guidelines. Let everyone know that going forward, there is no parking in the red brick building. Please make this note going forward. Lastly, please make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms. Thank you for joining us for today's service and here ends our weekly announcements. God bless you. Come on, KFT, have you been blessed today? Come on, you don't sound like it. KFT, have you been blessed this Sunday? Amen, amen. And what do we say to the mother of this house? One more time, what do we say to the servant of God who brought us a message today? If you didn't catch something today, you might have to watch it back 10 times because this one, this one was one of them ones, amen. From the gifts that was released, the graces, come on and give God a shot of praise for placing such a servant in our house to teach us how to become spiritually great. Not every church receives these types of words, so we have to be grateful. We have to honor. Give honor where honor is due. Let's stretch our hands forward to our mama. And we are asking the Lord to continue to bless her, to continue to preserve her, to replenish her for everything that she poured out to us today, to restore her. Lift up your voice and thank God for her life today. Oh Lord, we thank you for Prophetess Leslie's life. Lord, we thank you for allowing her to be our servant in this house at this end time, Father God, to bring us an old time word, to teach us to love your word, to do the work that you have called us to do. God, we thank you for her life, God. We ask you to restore her. We ask you to replenish her, Father God. Everything that she has watered us with, Father God, let her be watered, Father God. Let her cup never run dry, Father God. Let her oil continue to overflow, Father God. Continue to cover her. Continue to cover her family, Father God. Give her grace in every area of weakness, Father God. Continue to empower her and uplift her for the work at hand. Father God, we say thank you for this mighty woman servant. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And we all 
also want to stretch our hands forward to our Papa's chair. As our mama told us earlier, after a week long with the children, he still went to go work in the vineyard in our branch in North Carolina. So we are lifting our voices and we are asking the Lord to preserve him, to give him the grace to do the work that he is called to do. Lift up your voice and pray for our bishop elect. Oh Lord, we thank you for your manservant, Father God, the one you have called as the bishop elect over this house. God, we do not count it, we do not count it in vain that you have called him to be our shepherd. God, we just thank you for his life. God, as he is doing your work over in North Carolina, God, continue to give him the grace. Continue to give him the grace. God, favor him, favor him, favor him. Let it be said when people see him, how could you do this without, without so much pain, with ease? Father God, let it be a testimony of your grace, of your love, of your favor, and your diligence towards him. Father God, we thank you for his life. We ask you to continue to preserve him on the byways and highways. Let the blood of Jesus speak over him and be jealous over him. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Father God, we thank you for today's service. We commit everything that went on today into your hands. Father God, all the way from opening prayer and Bible studies to your word. Father God, we seal everything that you have done in your precious blood. Father God, we pray that as people have come in and tuned in online to attend this service, let testimonies continue to flow in this house. Let miracles, signs, and wonders be something that we see as normal in the house of KFT because of the grace that you have given us. Father God, let the anointing and the grace for the day be evident in our lives as we move to glory and glory. Help us to be rooted and hunger for your word like never before, Father God. Let it be said that KFT is raising a generation, it's raising an army of trailblazers, of men and women of God who are fasting and praying for your goodness. Father God, we thank you for what you have done and what you will do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, KFT, one more time. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. And we cannot leave a Sunday service without the blessing of our mama today. So one more time, KFT, a round of applause for our mama, prophetess, Leslie Osei. Amen, hands lifted. May the strength of God sustain you. This week, I pray that the power of God would preserve you, that the hands of God would protect you, that God would direct you, and that God would speak to you. I pray that the anointing for the day reaches you and manifests through you. I pray that you would be looked at as a beacon of hope this week. That you would receive testimonies this week. I pray that the Lord himself would lift you as he is the lifter up of men. May you be protected this week. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. I ask that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you in Jesus' name. And may we share the grace with one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. The grace is to be shared. We often do it wrong by just saying it. It says share the grace. So go to people that you don't know. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all.